Okay, so now uh, that we have our body copy formatted, um, we can create a paragraph style for this. And I'm going to go back to this page to show you. The, here are my paragraph styles. And you can see I have a paragraph style for a pull quote, a pull quote attribution, a headline, a deck head, a byline, body copy sidebar title, sidebar copy, photo credit, caption, caption white if the captions on something dark, an author shirt tail, uh, a header, uh, a folio, and so on and so forth. So what does that mean? That means that all these have been designed already so all, it's a one-click step to change them from one thing to another. So if I take this copy right here and I make place it right here. If I highlight this and I go uh, pull quote. Now this plus sign means that there's an override on this which looks this looks really bad so let's clear the overrides. Alright so that's what a pull quote looks like. Here's what an attribution looks like. Pull quote, attribution, headline. So it looks a lot like this headline over here. So it's a starting point and I just made it smaller. A deck head. There's no deck head there. A byline. Uh, there's no byline on this story. Body copy. There's the body copy. Sidebar title. Uh, there's no sidebar here. Sidebar copy. Photo credit. Here's the photo credit. Usually the photo credits uh, it, uh, reside in the inner margin, just away from the body copy. Uh, caption, and here's the caption down here. Um, caption white, so it's white, you can't see it, uh, but pull it over on top of the photo. So this is interesting, it disappeared when I put it over uh, on top of the photo. And that's because there's a text wrap around this photo. And so if I want to have this um, be placed on an image that has a text wrap, I need to select the type and then go um, Object, Text Frame Options, and click Ignore Text Wrap. Click OK. And now you can see the white type on the photo. Uh, Let's see, author shirt tail, there's that. A uh, shirt tail is basically usually at the end of the story and it gives a little primer on the, um, on the author. Header, folio. If you ever see this pink space right here, that means that it's looking for a, um, a typeface that is not loaded on the computer. So if I highlight that and come over here, it's looking for Abraham Lincoln regular. All right, so that's probably from that folio is prom, probably from a different uh, magazine. So that's the paragraph styles that I have here. But if I go back to Untitled, there are no paragraph styles. So how do I create a paragraph style? Well, the first thing is is you do, you design it, and so I can design. I, we've already designed this body copy, and so I can just like highlight any portion of this body copy, come over to Paragraph Styles, and go new paragraph style and you usually want to name it semantically so you know what it is so I'm just going to la label this body copy and here's body copy and I can design a headline and make it a headline paragraph style I can design a deck head and make that a paragraph style um, I can uh, design a caption and make it a caption, make the caption a paragraph style, and so on and so forth. So forth, just like I did with this. All these are just you just design them ahead of time. You highlight it. You select a new. Here's another way to select create new style, and you just label it what it is. So you can see there's a drop cap right here. And let's just show you how to do a drop cap. If I go back into here, 
and I highlight this W, I can go to paragraph styles and this one right here is drop cap number of lines zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it just kind of in, uh, creates a, this drop cap, door cap indent. And the thing about cap indents is you never want to indent a cap indent. And so here is the indentation. So if I never want to have an indentation, uh, basically the uh, cap indent is the indent, or the drop cap is the indent. So anytime you do this, you want to make the indentation zero. The other thing is you can uh, change this to any typeface that you want. It doesn't have to be the typeface of the body copy. Uh, you can change it to any color you want. Let's go to paragraph styles. Now notice that I have the T selected and I have the T fill selected and let's just hit one of the colors. Voila. So there's a drop cap, cap indent. That's how you change um, color for any type. Like if I have this right here and I need to change that to a different color, I could do that as well. The other thing is character styles. If I go back to um, this and I go to character styles, notice that I have a drop cap style, which is basically says whenever I have a drop cap, it's going to be this typeface. Um, and I also have a body copy bold style and so sometimes um, there are needs there are needs to have uh, bold words in body copy so if I come down here and I kind of come in here and right down here they have the website and they may want to make that bold so I'm gonna select that and change it to a typeface that I want and make it bold. Now the thing is, um, this is the same point size as the body copy, but it looks a lot bigger. That's because usually sans serif typefaces have a larger X height, therefore they look bigger than they actually are. So I'm going to downsize this a point and make it a little bit smaller. And then I can make a new character and make it body copy bold. So why am I creating a character style in the, instead of a paragraph style? Well if I made this body copy bold uh, a paragraph style, if I highlighted this and clicked on paragraph style, it would change the whole paragraph to body copy bold where character style only uh, makes things bold wherever you highlight them so if I needed other to be body copy bold I can just go like that and like that okay character styles